कोविड नाइन्टीन एंड चिल्ड्रन आई एम डॉक्टर तिमन गौड़ा पाटिल एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस कोविड नाइन्टीन इन रिलेशन टू चिल्ड्रन सम इम्पॉर्टेंट डेफिनेशंस एंड फुल फॉर्म्स एवरी वन शुड बी वेल वर्स्ड बिफोर वी स्टार्ट एवरी वन मैट ऑलरेडी नो दैट सार्स कोव टू इज द वायरस कॉजिंग कोविड नाइन्टीन एंड कोविड नाइन्टीन कॉजेस एम आई एस सी एंड इट्स फुल फॉर्म इज मल्टी सिस्टम इन्फ्लोमेटरी सिंड्रोम इन चिल्ड्रन टू नो मोर बेसिक्स एंड इम्पॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ कोविड नाइन्टीन एंड सार्स कोव टू वॉच प्रीवियस वीडियोज ऑन कोविड नाइन्टीन If some of you are thinking why are we discussing this one year into the pandemic you all should know that covid-19 is not yet over even after we all get vaccinated which itself will take very long time to achieve covid-19 will keep affecting our lives in a significant way as all of us are aware of the waves in which people are suffering all over the world from covid-19 couple of waves have already happened and few more are yet to happen after a while COVID-19 will cease to occur in waves. The spread will be much slower but will surely continue. And lastly, we also have to consider the effects of variants of SARS-CoV-2 virus, the ones which are more dangerous than the others. This video is for all the concerned parents and more specifically to those who are in dilemma on whether or not to send their children to schools when they start. whether it is safe or not to travel in flights bus trains whether it is safe to attend functions and crowded events what are the risks involved if they do any of the above mentioned and how to prevent them from getting infected and by chance if they or their children get infected what are the measures for treatment and isolation to know all these and more keep watching this series on covid-19 the most vulnerable among all the humans are the youngest oldest and people with comorbidities who have much higher chances of having severe form of adverse effects occurring due to given disease although covid-19 being very unusual and unpredictable disease in comparison to other well known viral diseases due to its rapidity of spread all over the world and havoc it has created because of sheer number of mortalities it has caused mainly among the adult population Luckily enough though its effects on children of all age groups both in terms of morbidity and mortality have been much lower in comparison to adult population similar to few other viral diseases like chickenpox measles polio etc which cause much more severe disease in adults than in children with this knowledge of children are less vulnerable than adults Why is it still necessary to understand COVID-19 in relation to children? Number one, although the probability of children having life-threatening disease due to SARS-CoV-2 is much lesser than their adult counterparts, they can still have it. Two, children with pre-existing comorbidities like congenital heart disease, liver ailments, etc., the ability to tolerate severe forms of illness or prolonged illness also diminishes. Three. to understand and be prepared for dynamics of care taking when parents or guardians are affected by covid-19 and can't be part of care taking temporarily or permanently of their children four everyone should know that covid-19 vaccination to adults is ready for use in most parts of the world but for children it is still under trial or testing phase to know how to go about your daily life until then you need to have better understanding of covid-19 in relation to children number 5 although exceedingly small percentage of children have severe forms of covid-19 children can still spread it to vulnerable members of family and friends who in turn can have severe forms of covid-19 and succumb to it in this video we are going to discuss covid-19 in relation to children of all age group from newborns to adolescents and this is how covid-19 manifests in all humans including children transmission of sars-cov-2 first from an infected person sars-cov-2 is transmitted to a non-infected person then non-infected person will also have infection then covid-19 disease process manifests after covid-19 disease manifests in comparison to adults most of the children recover After recovery some children might have post covid multi system inflammatory syndrome so this is the brief picture 
on how covid-19 manifests as the very popular saying goes prevention is better than cure being a doctor and an intensivist having worked mostly in icu coming from people like us you can take that more seriously than usual because we see how difficult and an uphill task it is to cure children once they reach a stage which warrants to an icu care so we will divide the following discussion into two parts on the basis of about court prevention is better than cure into one disease versus cure two transmission versus prevention one disease children with sars cov2 infection can present with two types of manifestations first covid-19 disease covid-19 symptoms occur within first and second weeks of infection or contact with suspected or confirmed covid-19 positive person majority of children will be asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic children who are symptomatic by varying severity they might present with following fever lethargy vomiting diarrhea poor feeding rhinorrhea cough and lastly tachypnea and increased work of breathing the last two signs might be of covid-19 associated pneumonia in children apart from these many more signs and symptoms similar to the ones occurring in other common viral diseases can also be seen in them everyone should note as all of us know that pneumonia is number one cause of death in adults with covid-19 disease although pneumonia is also reported in children barely any children have reportedly succumbed to it in whole of the world next coming to cure under cure firstly diagnosis diagnosis of covid-19 disease is by rapid antigen test or rt pcr radiography is advised only for children with respiratory symptoms next coming to subheading treatment under treatment first consult your pediatrician either online or offline and based on symptoms usual treatment might include antipyretic antiemetic zinc supplements or hospitalization and respiratory support and iv medications as required second second type of syndromic manifestation is multi system inflammatory syndrome in children short form is misc post covid 19 multi system inflammatory syndrome in children occurs in most of the patients in between 2 to 4 weeks after infection with sars cov 2 now what is multi system inflammatory syndrome in children multi system inflammatory syndrome in children is a serious condition in which vital systems and composing vital organs of human body such as the respiratory system which includes lungs and airways circulatory system which includes heart and blood vessels renal system which includes kidney digestive system which includes liver pancreas intestine nervous system which includes brain spinal cord and lymphatic system which includes spleen and lymph nodes and lastly skin or eyes two or more systems among them become severely inflamed so that is multi system inflammatory syndrome in children a child with multi system inflammatory syndrome in children can present with three variants first one a typical kawasaki disease second variant is kawasaki disease shock syndrome or also called as toxic shock syndrome third variant is hlh that is hemophagocytic lymphohistocytosis so these are the three variants possible but not conclusive signs and symptoms of multi system inflammatory syndrome in children are fever lasting for 24 hours or more vomiting diarrhea pain in stomach increased heart rate rapid breathing skin rash red eyes redness or swelling of the lips and tongue redness or swelling of hands and feet feeling unusually tired headache dizziness or light headedness enlarged lymph nodes so these all are possible but not conclusive signs and emergency warning signs of multi system inflammatory syndrome in children include bluish lips or face difficulty in breathing inability to wake up or stay awake new onset of confusion or severe stomach pain so how to diagnose multi system inflammatory syndrome in children diagnosis is by rapid antigen test or rt pcr along with antibody test many children might test negative for rapid test or rt pcr but will definitely have antibody test positive for covid 19 
Evidence indicates that many of these children were infected with COVID-19 virus in the past as shown by positive antibody test results, suggesting that multisystem inflammatory syndrome is caused by an immune system reaction related to COVID-19, which is also known as immune dysregulation. Next, we will discuss about few doubts which creep up in many people's mind regarding immunity in relation to multisystem inflammatory syndrome in children. Why does MISA happen in some, not others? It happens due to immune dysregulation among few of us. And in whom immunity behaves as it is supposed to, they will not suffer from this syndrome. And why only some of us have immune dysregulation, while rest are fine? The causative factors for immune dysregulation might arise from genetic and environmental factors, the specifics of which still remain unclear, and will require further studies by scientists and doctors. What does immune dysregulation mean? So, the job of immune system in the body is to find and neutralize harmful foreign substances like viruses in this case. Certain people's immune system instead overreacts and damages its own body by causing inflammation to vital organs. Overreaction of immune system and causing harm to its own organs is called as immune dysregulation. So when to seek medical care in children suspected of multisystem inflammatory syndrome? If your child has mild symptoms which is progressing or worsening, and if your child has non-severe but suspected symptoms of multisystem inflammatory syndrome, consult your pediatrician immediately. And if your child shows any emergency warning signs or is severely sick with other signs and symptoms, take your child to the nearest hospital equipped with emergency ICU facility or call the designated emergency number. Treatment Hospitalization in ICU and treatment as per discretion of in-charge pediatricians. Based on symptoms, the treatment will include cardiorespiratory support, IV medications which include IVIG, steroids, aspirin and immunomodulators and also other treatment and medications when and as necessary. Note. There is no recommended antiviral drug for children suffering with any form of COVID-19. All the medications mentioned and not mentioned above are only to treat symptoms and complications arising due to the disease process. Now coming to statistics. Although lots of studies are undergoing, the concrete statistics based on region and ethnicity are not available for multisystem inflammatory syndrome in children. The current statistics available are from developed countries which suggests that only 0.1 to 0.2 percent of all COVID-19 infected children have multisystem inflammatory syndrome and among these 0.2 percent of children 1.5 to 2 percent succumb to multisystem inflammatory syndrome and overall deaths from all the causes due to COVID-19 in less than 25 years age group is 0.2 percent of the infected while the deaths might be low in children but long-term comorbidities and effects on vital organs of these children who have survived multisystem inflammatory syndrome will only be known in coming years. When these statistics are compared to COVID-19 deaths in adults, the total deaths stand at 2-5% of all infected adults, with majority of them aged above 55 years. After knowing all this regarding COVID-19 and its relation with children, now we understand why prevention is much better than cure. So let's all maintain all the required preventive measures for our and for our children's health. Stay tuned for the next video to learn about age-specific preventive measures for children and a longer Q&A session. Hope this covers many aspects you wanted to know regarding COVID-19 in relation to children. If you like what we have covered in this video, and want to know more about COVID-19, watch more videos on YouTube channel Tejam and like, share and subscribe. And comment below if you have any queries regarding COVID-19. We will try and answer them in the coming videos.